Hi, my name is Alan McKenzie. Welcome to today's tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make icons. It's a pretty quick way to make them and you don't need to hire a graphic design artist. You can do it yourself. So here is just a simple uh, plain looking one and here's one with a burst effect that you see a lot on Apple icons and uh, so forth. Okay, so first we start off by making a new document. Because it is going to be vectorized, you can make it any size you want, but you should keep it uh, somewhat within the parameters of what you're actually going to use it for uh, as far as website or a brochure design or something like that. So keep it small, don't make like a 20 inch by 20 inch template. Okay, to start off we go to the shape builder, rectangle tool, hold down shift, and create a simple box. Got to get rid of the stroke and just have a fill. Let me go to Effect, Stylize, Round Corners. Hit Preview so you can see what's going on. And then here we're just going to round all the corners. And uh, 0.5 looks pretty good right there. Okay, now I'm going to copy and I'm going to make two copies of this. Okay. So for this middle one right here, I'm going to make it into, as you can see here, we have a light blue fading out to a dark blue. So here we go to the gradient and make sure it's filled. Take off the stroke. And right now, it's uh, by default, it gives you this black to, to white. Um, and it's also linear. We want to make it radial. Okay, now I'm going to go in and set the colors to what I want. Okay, now it's important to have the lighter color fading out into the darker color. This gives uh, some depth perception as if it was indented. So keep in mind you want to do that and also, of course, customize your color to whatever your logo, uh, whatever your logo is or whatever your company colors or whatever you guys feel like. So, all right, let's move along. This looks pretty good. Um, with this one, I'm going to create the border. So we'll change it from a fill to a stroke. And I'm going to go ahead and increase the stroke weight to about an 8 point. Okay, right now it's just a stroke. So I want to turn that into an object. So I hit expand appearance and see that creates more anchor points. And then I'm going to expand this, which will create an object. Shit, OK. Place it right on top. And then now I can go in and give it kind of a whatever effect you want. Um, I wouldn't recommend radial. It's up to you. I'm going to make it kind of look like a metal button. See how it comes out. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I can you can always move this slider to you know, to stylize your gradient. Okay, so now that I have the frame in the background, now for this last third piece that I had you guys copy earlier. We're going to go ahead and make this uh, bubble effect or I don't really know exactly what to call it but it's on a lot of icons 
today and it's a pretty popular theme. First, we're going to start off by grabbing your lips tool and change it to make sure you're on white. Oops. Don't do that. Okay, deselect that shape that you have there. Grab your lips tool, make it white. And just click and drag. I'm going to bring this down to 20% opacity. And that looks good. What it, what I have this shape over here for is um, to, to clean this up a little bit. So basically, I'll go ahead and copy this shape. Show you guys how to how to merge this. Select both of these. Go to Window, Pathfinder, and. Oh, you know what? I forgot one step. Okay, this is important because I have to expand the appearance otherwise and in order to get these corners. Otherwise, if I go ahead and merge these, I'll have I won't have rounded corners. So basically, we just need to go in here expand appearance, which create vector points. And now it'll work. Okay, so right here on the Pathfinder, I just clicked Intersect. So now, instead of having this excess uh, uh, effect, we now have a nice trim thing that's ready for print or ready for, for web. Go ahead and size that. Now you can just throw in your logo right here in the center of your company and you're ready to go. Here is just a really quick logo that I took from my school. I just live traced it and also added a drop shadow to the back. But just to show you what you could do with your own logo, drop it right here in the center. And make sure you bring the bubble effect on top, and that's it. If you want to take it one step further and you want to create this uh, this burst effect, and here's a better one. Basically, what you got to do is take your line tool, and then the button is usually at the top left of your keyboard, below the escape button. It's an apostrophe. You hold that down while holding down your your line and drag in a circle. And this is pretty sensitive. I'm doing it pretty quick, but that's a really quick way to get uh, your burst effect. And of course, you're going to want to create a line. Make it pretty transparent. and then you size it and um, and trim it up and get it ready to go you know for either print or for web so for the sake of the tutorial I'm not going to clean it up right now but this is the finished effect and that's about it if I wanted to save this let me go ahead and get rid of that because it, it doesn't look too good so if I wanted to save this for web first off I would I'd need to have my artboard sized and you'd size it appropriate to whatever your website is or if you're gonna print you know like if on my website I wanted it to be one inch by one inch I would go ahead and size that out before then you go to file save for web and make sure it's set on PNG PNG is a uh, very high quality JPEG is not as good PNG is the best way to go so I would hit save And that's it. Thank you guys for watching my tutorial. Hope you learned a lot. Make sure you like my video.